You are listening to the Fun with Horror podcast with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hello, all you beautiful country bumpkins out there. (laughs) Welcome to another episode of Fun with Horror, your weekly movie review podcast in which Andrew and I take turns giving each other movies to watch. And then we discuss them the following week. We only have two rules. Number one, whoever picks the movie has to pick a movie they've never seen. And number two, we both have to watch that movie before we discuss it. Now, last week, I chose the fourth movie in the Christopher Nolan Batman quadrilogy, Dark Knight (laughs) of the Scarecrow. (laughs) Just kidding. Which kind of would work. (laughs) Just (laughs) kidding. It would work. Um... (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I picked 1981's made-for-TV movie Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, directed by Frank DeFelita, and starring Charles Durning, Robert F. Lyons, Claude Earl Jones, and Lane Smith. Nice. And Larry Drake. Yeah. Uh, I can't forget Larry Drake. Um, of course, stay tuned to the end of this episode to find out what Andrew is going to pick for our next movie. Happy Tuesday, Andrew. Happy Tuesday. You scared me when you started this. I, I like, know. That was... that was. That <laughs> I gave was, the countdown, and I was, was thinking, like, you didn't hear it. And no, I heard it. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, uh-oh, did it, like, cut out? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I have a few things. Yeah. Do you have anything before? I have a big thing. You have, well, yeah, but that's one of my three things. <laughs> oh, okay. Then no, that's my I'm big gonna thing. I'm going to introduce that big thing. Um... <laughs> First of all, but first, first, yes, yes. Last week, mm-hmm. I posed a question to you. Yes, and it was once again. It was, have you ever seen a movie uh, in a like in the theater, wherever? Mm-hmm. You had an initial opinion of it, but then without watching it again, you just thought about it and thought about it. And the more you thought about it, the more your your opinion or your outlook of the movie just changed. Right. The more you thought about it without having watched it a second time. And we both answered the question. The thing is, is when I came up with that question, I had a movie in my head, but when we recorded, I completely forgot what that movie was. So <laughs> I came up with another movie, Batman versus Superman, mm-hmm. that was like a runner-up, I guess, answer. But then days later, it suddenly hit me. Like my perfect example of that question, and that was the the newest adaptation of Pet Cemetery. Mm. Yeah, I saw that in the theater, mm-hmm. and I wasn't sure what to think of it. Right, there were I knew there were things I liked about it and things I didn't care for, but then the weirdest thing, man, like. It just stuck with me, and I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And by the time it hit home video, I could not wait to watch it again. <laughs> and I think nice. I think the day it hit home video, I bought it and then watched it again that night. Because there's, you know, I'm not going to get into it, like right. a full-on review of that movie, but there were things that I really did like about that movie a lot. Nice, yeah. I don't think it's a bad movie like a lot of people do. Right. I liked it. <laughs> Yeah, see? I liked it. I had a good time with it. Yeah, I think I mean I know we don't we don't do movies that we've already both seen, but it'd be interesting to talk about that movie sometime. Yeah, I yeah. there's there's a lot of people that don't like it and I've got, you know, I've got things that I did like about it, but Yeah. But more importantly, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, man. You've got some news. I do. Why don't you tell all the good people out there what your news is, buddy? Well, uh, as as people know, I think I've talked about it on this, is that I have a, a baby on the way coming. I think you announced it first here on Fun I With Horror. I think I did. N- n- before Cindy even knew. That's right. Yep. She didn't. Yeah. My <laughs> wife did not know. <laughs> she was pregnant. <laughs> she found out from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> was listening. What? <laughs> oh, that's that, what that is. Yeah. Oh, wonder why I wasn't feeling so good. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no, but this week we uh, we got to find out the 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 gender of the baby, and of course um, it was amazing because we got to have you there on on Zoom, which was yeah. lovely. 
um, and that uh, we have discovered that it is a boy. We are having a baby boy in September, so I'm I'm very excited. We are congratulations, buddy. Thank you, man. I'm and yeah. of course that's the gender at birth. Yes, you know. but yes, uh, yes. yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, man, we're we're pumped. We're really excited, and we. Yeah, I'm just I like no joke. I just keep thinking like, oh man, what if this baby grows up getting up early with me at 4 a.m. and just wants to watch a horror movie before school? I'm like, oh man. Or you find a little six 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 like uh like the on omen. His little head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if that happens? That'd be cool. Yeah, I probably won't. We probably will just avoid naming him Damien just to be safe. Well, speaking of names, <laughs> yeah. you know. You know, I have some names for you mm-hmm. that I'll accept, other than Scotty, of course. Of course. Uh. <laughs> I will accept Charles, yep. Jason, <laughs> Frederick. Um, uh, oh, how about Dexter? That's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. I know you like that one. I do like that one. Uh, any others? <laughs> um, no, I think that was that was Bubba. <laughs> and not because of the movie we're doing today, but you know, just Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Nice, yes, Bubba. Oh, it works on a lot of levels. It does. It, it does. does. Yeah. No. No official names yet, but uh, I. I'll. When Cindy listens to this, I'll tell her, "Hey, grab a pen and notepad." Yeah. Yeah. You know, even if you're driving. That's right. Yes. Yeah. These are important. <laughs> Don't even pull over the car. Just drive and write at the same time. Yep. This is important. Safe. Yep. Well, that's amazing, buddy. I'm really happy for you. Thank you, man. And thanks again for, for, for being there, buddy. I loved it was great. It was really great to see you there. It really was. It, it was I'm I'm glad I was there. <laughs> I hate Zoom, but yeah, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun being there. Thank you, man. I love you. I don't I don't it's funny enough, I don't mind Zoom. Mm-hmm. When it comes to like work stuff, like if I have to go to a work meeting on Zoom, mm-hmm. but man, when it's just like a party of people, mm-hmm. especially when I hardly know anybody, yeah, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I'm just sitting here on my couch, right. and everybody mm-hmm. else is talking. I'm just gonna go. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Well, it's the only way we could get so many people. I'm sorry. Oh, I understand why you did it. <laughs> You don't have to apologize to me. I'm just saying. I know. I'm. I totally am with you, though. It's. It can be super just awkward. <laughs> also, yes. Last little thing I have. Yeah, man. Um, I started a new book, and Ooh. it's very related to what we do. Um, I started a book called Clown in the Cornfield. <gasps> I've heard of that. Okay. You have? Yes. Oh. Yeah. The author is named Adam Cesare. I think that's how you say his last name. Cool. Yeah. Forgive me if it's Cesare, but I think it's Cesare. Um, yeah, and man, it's not a super long book. Okay. But it is, uh, as far as I've gotten, mm-hmm. I have maybe 100 pages left, or, or yeah, a little more than 100 pages. Okay. It's good. Nice. I, I, the whole time I'm reading it, I keep picturing... Obviously, I'm picturing it as a movie, and this would make a great movie so far. I don't know how it's going to end, but we'll see. Maybe maybe next episode I'll come back and I'll say, God, that book sucked. (laughs) Well, I think there's a sequel. It's coming. Oh, it's coming. Okay, okay. Friendo Lives, Clown in the Cornfield 2. Is that really what it's called? Friendo? Yeah, the the name of the the mascot of the town is this um, clown named Frendo. Dude, I'm on board. I love clowns. I love scarecrow type characters. So yeah, that sounds cool. You should you should absolutely read this book. All right, I'll put it in the I list. I would love to talk to you about it. Yes, actually, I'll probably yeah, I'll do that after this because I'm that sounds awesome. I needed a good book, so perfect. It has nothing to do with scarecrows, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you just cornfield. said that, and it's probably because we're thinking of the yeah the cornfield and this movie we just did. Right. But uh, yeah, there's no scarecrows. Hey, it's all way. it's clowns, clowns. Well, and you know me and clowns. I love clowns. So I love clowns too. Yes. Beep beep, Richie. <laughs> Tonight on the CBS Saturday Night Movies, this gentleman, 
saved this little girl's life, but they accused him of harming her. Do this ourselves. And he was tragically murdered. Now, one by one, the men of this town are dying. Who is his avenger? Is it the dead man's grief-stricken mother? They killed my boy! The little girl who loved him. I know what you did to brother. Or could it be the Scarecrow? Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, coming up next... Scotty, uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know yes. how to start this little section segment because. Well, the, maybe you should tell everybody what movie I picked. Well, yeah, yeah. I was just going <laughs> to mention, but then I was like, no, I'm cutting into like what we're going to talk about. I got real close to saying oh. something I probably shouldn't have. So, oh, yeah, let's jump. We'll jump back and go to what the movie is. <laughs> yeah. OK, that's a good idea. Since I think that's so. what we're doing. Hi, how are you? <laughs> hey. It's going to be Hey, a Andrew, I don't know if you know, but on this podcast, we talk about whatever movie we watch. Oh, is that what we do? Yeah. Oh, jeez. What movie did I pick? Yeah, this week uh, you picked a <laughs> 1981 television movie. Yeah. By the name of The Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Well, no the. Oh, sorry. You're right. Just Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Yep. From, 19, like I said, 1981, straight to TV, man. Made for TV. Made for TV. And this has kind of a little, got a cult following, this one. Yeah. Uh, which was, yeah, very, very interesting to hear about. I just, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's fun that you picked a TV movie. I love it. Well, uh, I told you why I picked it. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, it, this was a request. Mm-hmm. Even before we started doing the podcast, my friend Brad kept requesting Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. So yes. we finally got around to doing it. Right on, Brad. But, of course, I think I think the question that's on my mind, and everyone listening, and of course we all want to know, but what were your initial thoughts, my man, of not the, but Dark Knight of the Scarecrow from 1981? Well, I'm going to be honest here. <laughs> Please. I could, okay. <laughs> I this is file this under movies I wish I had seen back in the day. Got it. Kind of like what I said when we did the Changeling. Yes. Um yep. I could tell that this is a, this was a very well-made movie. This was a good movie. Mhm. Mm Even though it didn't from what I've read it didn't really make a big impact when it when it came on TV mm -hmm. back in 81. Um but uh, yeah, I could see where it was good. I could see why it has the cult following that it has. Mm -hmm. And I did, I appreciated <laughs> uh, certain aspects of the movie. Mm -hmm. I also was kind of bored through mm -hmm. some of the movie. There were, there were parts where this movie dragged for me. Yeah. And, uh, but... That's about that's yeah that's it in a nutshell. Um, we'll get into it more, but mm -hmm. uh, before we do, what did what did you think, buddy? You know, in all honesty, pretty much the same thing. If I had watched this much younger, I think I would have really, I would have enjoyed it more. But while watching it now, I was pretty bored through most of it as well. Um, and can't yeah, yeah. and uh, well, like you said, we'll talk about. It. I definitely have some notes on this one, but. Yeah, I was, yeah, was, wasn't was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so let's, well, let's jump into it then. But before we do, before we give our notes, we'll have you do the three-minute recap of the movie. Yeah. Uh, which, of course, if anyone is listening to this right now and has not seen the movie uh, and doesn't mind spoilers, keep listening. But if you do not like spoilers, pause this. Go watch the movie and then come right back and listen to the rest because, like we said, Scotty's going to give a recap and then we're going to dive into this movie. So, are you ready, my friend, for your for the recap? I am not ready, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> hey, that I works, did not man. practice this this week, so it's we're just going to see how it goes. Good, be really. It's natural, not it's man. not that complicated though. So. <laughs> yeah, this one. Yeah, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready, are you ready, man? Uh, I'm ready. I'm All ready. right. I'm going to count you down then. So in five, four, three, 
two, one. Go. All right, so uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow is about this guy named Bubba. He's kind of a simple-minded dude, and he plays with this little girl uh, at the beginning of the movie. They're friends, but there's uh, some country bumpkins in the town that uh, don't like Bubba, especially the mailman, uh, Otis. And uh, Otis wants to put an end to Bubba playing with the little girl, thinking that Bubba might do something to the little girl. Well, the little girl's attacked by a dog. Bubba brings the little girl bleeding to her mom. Uh, word gets out that, the, that, that Bubba killed the little girl, and all of a sudden the, the, four, the four main men, uh, they get together. They put a little lynching mob together. They go to Bubba's house where his, his mother uh, has hidden him. They go out to the scarecrow uh, in, the, in the field. And the, the Otis sees that Bubba's inside the scarecrow. He's disguised as the scarecrow. And they shoot him. They shoot Bubba dead. Well, the rest of the movie, uh, the next thing you know, there's a trial. All four men walk free because they can't prove anything because... See, that they put a pitchfork in Bubba's hand, and that says that they killed Bubba in self-defense because Bubba was going to kill them with a pitchfork. Everybody knows that's a crock, but they get off because the justice system is so great. Next thing you know, first thing, uh, one of the guys, um, Harless, sees a scarecrow in his yard. Harless is killed. Next thing you know, Philby sees a scarecrow. Philby is killed. And then the next thing you know, Otis and uh, Skeeter, they go out to dig up Bubba's body. And they're digging it up, and they, they open the casket, and Bubba's in there. But then Otis, he's, he's paranoid. He's crazy. So he kills Skeeter right then and there. So then Otis is driving, and all of a sudden the little girl's in the middle of the road. So Otis stops, and he goes chasing the girl into the cornfield where he corners her, and he's probably about to kill her, and all of a sudden the tractor comes on. Tractor chases Otis, who doesn't know how to run left or right, just straight. <laughs> but as Otis is running from the tractor, all of a sudden he goes, bam! He f runs smack dab into the scarecrow, who's holding a pitchfork, and stabs. He Basically, Otis stabs himself with the pitchfork. Last thing we see is the little girl hiding in the tractor, and all of a sudden you hear footsteps. And then she looks up. She goes, hi, Bubba. And there's the scarecrow holding out a flower to her. And she says she's going to teach Bubba a new game. And that's the end of the movie. Boom, man. Three seconds left. Beautiful. That wasn't too bad. What's that? That wasn't too bad. No, that was perfect. You... <laughs> <laughs> We're done, honestly. That was it. There we go. Boom. No, that was, that was I even I even mentioned some of the things I didn't care for. Right. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> I know. You, there was a couple of things in there that you talked about, and I giggled because I was like, oh, boy. We're yeah, I, I knew you would have had those same notes in oh, yours. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so I, oh yeah, yeah. I just think that was a that was perfect, and I let's jump into it, man. Let's let's talk about some things. You you mentioned a couple there, but what were some of the things that uh, maybe you didn't didn't like about this movie? Well, I mean, to be honest, there was there were some silly little things, but mm -hmm. I mean, overall, my own my my main critiques, mm -hmm. I guess, are just simply that the movie is dated. Right. Yep. It's a made for TV movie. They had it's a story that could have been told in an hour. Yeah. And they told it in I guess for us it was like an hour and 36 minutes or so. Yeah, I think so. And on TV it would have been a 2-hour movie with commercials. Yeah. It, so it just it was just slow at times and you know even when I watched it a second time I was sitting there thinking, okay, maybe I was just tired. The first time I watched it. Mm -hmm. And when I started watching it, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm into this. Yeah. But then it gets to a certain point, I'm like, all right. And I just started like kind of fast forwarding. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I don't I don't need to watch this again to take notes. I know this. Right. So yeah, it just kind of dragged for me in places. Yeah. And there's a point where I'm just like, okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um 
What about you? Same thing? Same thing. Honestly, yeah. Watching it the second time, I did the exact same thing. I was I took I fast forwarded certain scenes because I was like, I'm I it's a waste of time. <laughs> like I felt like. Um yeah. Because nothing happened. <laughs> it was just there. So, yeah, and that was a, a good chunk of this movie, I felt like. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I there's I have a lot of good notes for this movie, though. Mm-hmm. There's a yeah. lot of positives, and so much that you would think that the positives would outweigh the negatives. Mm-hmm. But just, it just that, that one negative, the fact that it drags so much, is a pretty big detractor for me wanting to watch the movie again yep agreed so uh but first i do want to say holy holy nut buddy <laughs> what so you watch this on prime as well prime yeah. video yep well this is i guess this movie's had a blu-ray release mm-hmm. and which i do not own um but this, the whatever they have on Prime is the same release, and man, the picture. Mm-hmm. I guess they did a restoration. One of the writers of the movie uh, oh. helped restore the movie. Oh, cool! And man, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's. Did awesome. you notice that? I, it did look pretty good. Yeah, for being a 1981 movie, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um. um that's cool. Yeah. That's really. I cool. thought it was beautiful, and I did. I Vincent Martinelli. Mm-hmm. who I don't think really did that much back in the day, was the DP, and I thought that there were a lot of beautiful shots in this movie. Nice. Yeah, you I know? would agree. Yep. It was a four-by-three picture, mm-hmm. but the way things were framed was just really nice. I really did enjoy the cinematography. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. Absolutely. And I also enjoyed the score. Yeah, I uh, did too. <laughs> Glenn Paxton, did it remind you of something? It reminded me of Taurus Trap. Yeah. Yeah, did it you too? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not so much not so much the 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 main theme to Tourist Trap. Right. More just the mood of the the music overall. Yes, exactly. Yep. So yeah, I really I I enjoyed the score and I I started thinking, man, if anybody from Waxwork Records is listening to this, mm-hmm. this would I think this is a perfect Waxwork Records release. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, buddy? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, the acting was, was mostly good. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty good. Larry cast. Drake was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he played, he played a really good, uh, <laughs> mentally handicapped man. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, not knowing the behind the scenes, I'm going to guess that the beginning of the movie seemed like a pretty big homage to Frankenstein. I have that same note. <laughs> yep, with the flower and everything. I was like, "Oh yeah." Yeah, except yeah. without Frankenstein right unintentionally hurting the girl. Exactly. But see, you kind of think that maybe that's going to happen. It, yeah, you do. I will say I got to throw in my note. Yeah, please. Um <laughs> like it kind of and I get it's 1981, but it was a little offensive how they portrayed his like little outfit like as this man with a mental disability they put him in like the most childish outfit i've ever seen i was like really like that's so (laughs) stereotypical that i was just like oh my gosh he has like that you know goofy hat and this overalls with like a striped t-shirt i mean it's like a little boy and i was just like oh guys no (laughs) like he doesn't have to wear that to show that he's got a mental disability like the audience understands so I just had to throw that note in there, though. I was like, Ugh. That's an interesting note. Yeah. It was That's just not something I really noticed. Ah, right on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> 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 and it maybe, maybe it's because, you know, as maybe you know this, but my mom taught, you know, uh, special education for years and years and years. Oh, okay. That's what she was a teacher of. So I think maybe that maybe that's part of it, too. But I just was like, oh, girl. <laughs> Give him some, a normal outfit, please. So what you're saying is, grown mentally handicapped men don't wear. I mean, they they may, but this was just so like, like let's make him look like a kid. Like let's make him look like he's, you know, I don't know. It just to like me, Chucky. Was, yeah, yeah, kind of like Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, that was my that was my gripe at the beginning. No, that's a, that's. 
That's that's a very that's a very good gripe. Thank you. <laughs> um, Charles Durning. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, he was he was great. Yeah. He was frustratingly good. <laughs> he really was. <laughs> Although I did, I, so I was I was kind of laughing because he just never took off that mailman outfit. <laughs> Like ever, the entire movie to the very end, he's wearing a stupid mailman outfit. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Even when they visit him at his house, he's got it yeah. on. <laughs> I didn't he's, even he's think of that. <laughs> going around, he's he's the mailman, <laughs> but he thinks he's the king of the town. Oh, he works probably because he works for the government. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, dude. Good one. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. So. Uh, also, Lane Smith, Lane Smith as Harless. Yes, yeah. I think I think I knew Charles Durning was in this, and but I didn't catch that Lane Smith was in it. Right. Yep. And it was very cool to see him because he's been in like so much. He's been in everything. Yeah. If you look at his credits, it's about a thousand movies. So. Yeah. 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 He's done it all. I mean, the peak of those is probably Son in Law with Polly Shore. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> But, you know, he's done a few other things, too. Oh, yeah. A few lesser movies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you brought up Son-in-Law. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stupid movie. <laughs> of course you do. Of course No, I I'm do. kidding. <laughs> no, it's fair. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know what to say about this movie. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I mean, uh, I, I have a lot of, like, m- little notes, too. Again, yeah, me too. Good me and too. then bad. <laughs> just little a lot of my things. notes were also just like I was taking notes along the movie, so I remembered all the beats of the movie and everything. Right. Yeah. Um. You know, like, like I I made a note of the dog that supposedly is going to attack the girl, and mm-hmm. when you first see the dog, it looks like the nicest dog, and you can <laughs> yes. just tell that they they dubbed in like dog growling noises. <laughs> yeah. He looked like a sweet dog. I'm yeah. like, oh, he's not going to hurt anybody. I know, no he's teeth showing or anything. He just kind of is there. <laughs> Not until the end. Like, yes, then yeah. his teeth start showing. You're They're right. like, yeah, okay. They finally <laughs> got him. I think, okay, so overall, let me get my, I think my favorite, it's not It's not an enjoyable subplot. Sure. But I think one of my favorite aspects of this movie mm-hmm. was kind of the character study of Otis. Oh, yeah, okay. Because at first he just seems like this, like your regular kind of country big shot guy who you know just wants to bully he's just a bully mm-hmm. you know even the three guys that follow him around he he tells them what to do and they they listen to him yeah even if they feel like they may not want to do what he says they end up listening to him anyways mm-hmm. um but then you find out something interesting and i don't know i'm sure you notice this mm-hmm but when he goes, he goes to deliver mail after after they've killed Bubba, right? And they've gone. The court has set them free, right? He goes to deliver mail, and after this little back and forth with uh, Bubba's mom, mm-hmm. she says, she says, I know, I I've seen you, Otis. I yes. see how you look at that little girl, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, Otis's demeanor just changes. Yep. Like up until that point, he's like all confident and he's bullying uh, Bubba's mom, Mrs. Ritter. Mm-hmm. But then suddenly he goes back to his 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 mail truck, and so all of a sudden you know that Otis is a pedophile. Yep, Otis is cr- a big creepo. He's a big creepo. Yep, and he probably wanted to kill Bubba because he was jealous that Bubba got to play with this little girl. Yeah. Which is, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, and then, too, that makes you, because at the beginning, he has the binoculars, and he's watching both of them. Yeah. Was you he know there he's just to watch now. her? Yep. You know, I mean, like, yeah. Ugh. 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 He's one of the worst villains I've seen in a movie. Yeah. Yep. He's he's awful. Yeah. And then he even goes to her school, and he, he corners her. Oh, I hated that. Oh, uh, and the thing is, is like, and this is what gets me, and it's so frustrating about this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, when they when they come out of the courtroom, there's all these other like, uh, you know, people cheering them on mm-hmm. because they're free. 
But there are townspeople that know what's going on. Right. Like the cop that shows up in the hallway as, as Otis is following the girl. Mm -hmm. It's like Otis the uh, party's that way. Right. He knows. Okay. Oh. <sighs> I didn't even think of that. Like, of course he would know. Yeah, like, because he was right there. He was waiting for it. Yep. Hmm. Oh, that's creepy, dude. Otis is the first one that shot. Like, they all had their guns out, but he's the one that shot Bubba first, and then they, the rest of them just, you know. Mm hmm. Ooh, shooting's happening. Right, yeah. Gotta shoot, too. Yep. Man. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Woman. Yeah. Yeah, and then scaring Bubba's mom, lit literally scaring her oh, yeah. to death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, jeez. And then, and then, and he, and then, uh, hello. And then he knew exactly how to like <laughs> clean up the mess by s turning the gas on and waiting for the explosion. It was like this guy is just constantly thinking bad things. Yeah, yeah. He, you're right. He is a he is a bad one of the worst villains we've had. That we've talked about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She's ugh. But then, like, okay, so they kill Bubba, mm -hmm. and then they're in court. Right. And <laughs> that was frustrating because this is just, like, it's how the justice system still works mm -hmm. extremely well. And it's why, yeah. it's why people don't trust our justice system sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, the men walk free and even make a joke about going to, you know, Otis takes out his watch. Oh, my God. <laughs> he takes out his little, his little, like, stupid little, like, chain watch. Right. And the Bubba's mom's or Bubba's lawyer is like, are you, am I hold, keeping you from something? Mm. And then Otis so, so horribly, he just, he just says, he says, yeah, I just look, just realizing that it's time for fried chicken. It's just like, oh, jerk. Yeah. So, yeah, I was really, even the other three guys that were kind of following him, they were still part of it. And I was like, I was really, it was really satisfying to see these people die. Right. Yep. Although, and maybe it's just because, again, this is an older movie and of course it was straight to TV. So you don't really see any, really in, much death in this movie except <laughs> yeah, Otis. Yeah. But part of me, I think it's because we're so spoiled now. I was like, oh, <laughs> I wanted to see someone fall in that chipper. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, oh, I knew we cool weren't going to see that, but. I know. <laughs> I mean, hey, we did get a glob of ketchup. <laughs> You're right. I forgot that about that. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and that's the other thing. Like, Harless. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so let's just jump to the end of the movie. Yeah. Because one thing I was like wondering, is this movie going to pull a mystery? Is this going to be right. somebody dressed as the Scarecrow? Yep. Is somebody there was just trying? Oh, no. Go Sorry. ahead. No, I was just going to say, because there's a lot of people that could have been. You know, they yeah. give you like the clues of either the mom or the lawyer or the girl or the... Yeah, and Otis suspects everybody. Right. Yep. Um, and I was hoping that it wasn't, that it was actually Bubba mm -hmm. back from the grave somehow. Right. Um. Although that's that's another issue that I had, but we'll get to that. <laughs> but let's talk about the deaths. So yes. first it's Harless. Right. Harless has a wood chipper who he was cleaning it in the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. The moment or the moment he, he was using the wood chipper. Right. Yes. The yes, moment yes. I saw that wood chipper, I was like, that's gonna come into play. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so Harless has been drinking one night mm -hmm. and he comes back home and goes out where he saw the scarecrow and there's no scarecrow there. And then he hears a noise in his barn. Mm. He goes in, he goes up the stairs to the to the top of the barn. And I don't know why I have this southern accent right now. <laughs> no, it works for this. It works. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he so he hears something. He hears like the something close and there's a box up there. And right. you think that somebody is in that box. Right. And he's standing up there, and all of a sudden the wood chipper just turns on. Mm hmm. That's it. That's yep. all that happens. The wood chipper turns on, and suddenly Harless loses his balance. I know. It's, it startles him so much that he loses his balance, grabs onto the light, and then falls into the wood chipper. Yep. And we see him fall. 
and then we see a glob of ketchup hit a plate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the funniest segue in the entire movie. For sure. Yes. <laughs> but I actually wrote the first time I watched the movie, I was like, this is a, that was a lame kill. Yeah. That was lame. I liked the idea of it, but it was lame. Yeah. Agreed. Like nobody even pushed him into the wood chip or anything. He I know. He just fell. I was hoping for at least, like, when he's up there looking kind of in the shadows, I was hoping at least for, like, a silhouette or yeah. something. Something there to at least give us, like, a ooh. But no. Nope. Buddy, I agree with you. Yeah. So then we're at breakfast the next morning with Otis. And those random and who, people that he, like, yeah. lives with. Yeah, but did you recognize any of them? Oh, I, I know I should have. Who did you I not You should have, buddy. You should have. Uh, Mrs. Bunch. The lady who ran that boarding house, mm-hmm. um, played by Alice Nunn, who played Large Marge in <gasps> Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Oh, duh. Awesome. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. I did not catch that. Oh, uh, that's great. <laughs> we also find out around this time that Otis is also an alcoholic. Oh, yes. Yep. He's always sneaking alcohol. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's also, yeah, besides besides finding out he's a pedophile, mm-hmm. before even that, he's delivering mail, and we see him take a, a nudie mag out of the paper sleeve, and I'm like, I remember those paper sleeves. Playboys, Penthouse, Hustler, those used to come in those paper sleeves <laughs> to hide what it was. Everybody knew what it was. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't get them. Let's just be clear on that. No. But I- <laughs> we, some of us had adult figures in our <laughs> lives who got those <laughs> i never i never had an adult figure but there would be kids at school every once in a while that would sneak one into school and we'd all look and be like <laughs> oh yeah man. you know i think my grandfather <laughs> and my dad both at one point got <laughs> yeah some. i know my grandpa did for sure because i used to sneak those <laughs> but anyway anyway <laughs> it's a different topic <laughs> so i guess Otis kills Miss Ritter, who who you already mentioned. Mm-hmm. He scares her. She right. has a heart attack. Then he burns her house down. Yep. That happens before Philby. Right. Yes. Now, Philby, I thought Philby was going to die of a heart attack because he's always taking his heart attack pills. I thought so, too. And, yeah, he, he sees the scarecrow in his yard, mm-hmm. in his field, and he goes out there, and he, like, goes to his knees clutching his chest. Yeah. I thought he was dead at that point. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. But no, um, then we get a nighttime scene where Philby is locking up for the night, I guess. Mm, yeah, and, I guess. And uh, <laughs> he hears things. This is this is one of my least favorite movie tropes, buddy. What is? So he gets in his car, and he's holding his chest. Oh, oh yes. His chest is something's happening. Mm-hmm. And he... Pulls his pills out and he takes, he swallows a couple pills and he's instantly better. Right. <laughs> That's one of my least favorite movie tropes. I love when a movie lets you know that whatever <laughs> pill somebody took, it it took like 20 to 30 minutes to take effect. Right. <laughs> yeah. When somebody swallows a pill and it just automatically, magically gives them an effect. Yep. I'm just like, come on. Yeah. I thought you were going to say the car not starting. As the trope nah. that you don't like, but nah, I like, that yeah. didn't bother me. I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Because I'm I think you. you kind of get the idea at that point that this, because he doesn't, the car. It's not a, it's not a thing where he tries to start the car and tries to start it, and then right at the last second it starts up. Right. That's it. True. Wasn't that trope? That's it true. was just it just didn't start. Right. So maybe, maybe, the scarecrow, uh, yeah. did something. True. But then, yeah, so then he goes to hide in his silo, mm-hmm. and then he can't get out, and he's the, the the machine comes on, and he's suffocated by wood chips, I guess, or whatever, grain. Grain, it was grain, yeah. Grain, okay. That actually, <clears throat> I, so no joke, it brought back a lot of memories. When we were kids, I'm from Montana. Oh. Okay. And they always had this <laughs> little toy tra- or a toy silo. And they'd put grain in it, and then they'd put, like, a little Lego guy in it, and they'd shake it, and you'd see the Lego guy <laughs> drop down immediately. And they're like, don't play on the silos. <laughs> like, to this wow. day, I still think about that because it scared me so much as a kid. <laughs> like, well, I never you know, wanted to I never on. had that lesson when I was a kid, so, wow. 
<laughs> yeah, we I, got that. <laughs> that makes me very happy that you had a personal connection to that scene. I really did. <laughs> That's <was> so dumb. <laughs> Wait, so did you ever see Witness with Harrison Ford? I don't think so. Okay, you need to watch it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I didn't actually write that this was a lame kill. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. By this point, I was just kind of tired of the mystery. Right. Yep. You know, we just kind of see some figure go into his office and that's it. We right. don't know who it is. And I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm over the mystery. Agreed. But I did think it was a very, when the grain buries him mm-hmm. and then we see his hand on top of the grain after yeah. it stops, I thought that was effective. I like that. Yep. I didn't think that was bad. Then we have Otis and Skeeter. <laughs> yeah. On a different night, by the way. Right. So, yeah. that brings up another point. <laughs> Why is this movie called Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? Touche. Why isn't it called Dark Knights of the Scarecrow? You are right, dude. This takes place over many nights. Oh, that's funny. So, which night is the Dark Knight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even well, catch that. I, what do you think, buddy? Which night do you think is the dark night? Um, I would say the uh, when Otis died, since that was the only time we really got to see a really see a death. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? I don't know. That's what I'm asking <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> dark nights of the scarecrow, but I guess dark nights of the scarecrow doesn't really go well. Yeah. I don't know. I think I don't know. I even wrote that down. I was like, "So is is it Dark Nights of the Scarecrow?" Right. That's. I wrote hilarious. that down because I was like, "Man, how many nights does this take?" I thought it was going to take place over one night, and I was all excited for that. Yeah, actually, that would have been awesome. Yeah. So anyway, Otis and Skeeter they go to the cemetery. They dig up Bubba. Mm-hmm. Then we don't even see Bubba. I know. I have that note. I was confused for a little bit. Oh, really? Because Skeeter, I know Skeeter's like, it's him. But that's all he says. He doesn't say, he doesn't, he doesn't like specifically say that he's in the casket. He just says, it's him. Right. And I'm like, okay, is he saying that the scarecrow is him? Or is he saying that the the body in the casket is Bubba? I don't know. Interesting. But no, there's. Because from what they're the way they're acting afterwards, Bubba is in the casket. Yeah. Yep. 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 But I wish they would have shown something. Yeah. Even like a hand or something. Like you don't. It's TV, so I don't know. It's TV. They should. They could have showed his face. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they didn't shoot him in the face. True. <sighs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they didn't show something there. That was weird. So then Otis gets the shovel. Yeah. And in his paranoia, decides to bash Skeeter over the head and bury him in the grave. Now, this was a fun part. I did like yeah. that Skeeter's silly, silly little hat yeah. stuck to Otis's shovel. I know. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a non-bloody little ew yep, part. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, why ew? It's sticky. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have the end when I was just ready for the movie to be over. Agreed. I mean, I'm sorry, Brad, but I know, like I said, I know this movie was good, and I know there's a cult following. Right. And I could see the the well-craftedness of this movie, but Mm -hmm. I was just not ready for it this week. No. I Both times. I'm with you, man. I completely agree. I think it's dated. I think it's slow at times. I just, ah. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I already I already talked about it. So Otis pulls a Prometheus and yeah. <laughs> runs straight. Yes. Oh um by the way, I did watch Prometheus this week and had a little laugh at that part. That's awesome. Anyway, but yeah, Otis <laughs> does not turn left or right, even though it's a slow moving tractor. It was so slow. He had plenty of time to go. <laughs> had he turned right ten feet? That tractor would have had to go so far around to swing back to try and get yeah. him. Nope. Nothing. So dumb. That silly <laughs> alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, okay, the saving grace is that he doesn't die by the tractor. Yes. Yeah. He runs into 
the pitchfork that the scarecrow was just holding. Mm-hmm. And that just kills him. Yeah. Also, we saw the tractor start up with nobody in it. That's true. They made a point to show that it was a ghost that was driving that tractor. Yes. Yep. So it's a ghost. Yes. That's and the ghost animates the scarecrow. Yes. And then it gives a flower to Mary Lee and she says she's going to teach him the chasing game. Right. Which I I thought, "Oh, are we getting a, you know, is that a sequel?" Maybe that's what's going to happen in the sequel. They're going to He's just going to chase people. Right? Yeah. No more hiding <laughs> and seeking. He's going to chase people. Which I really feel bad about not not really digging this movie that much. I I, I feel do bad. too. No, I do too. Especially having read I mean, it has good reviews. Like a lot yeah. of good reviews. People love this movie. I went on Letterboxd, man. Yeah. And I looked at the reviews and all of them are like 3 and 4 stars. Yeah. I was like, "What?" And I wonder if part of that is just people that, again, maybe grew up with it, and so it has that nostalgia factor, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Because I'm with you. I was I was bored, man. I was pretty bored in this movie, and I don't... It's not one I'm real excited to watch again. If ever. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm curious to see Dark Knight. So, yeah, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow 2. <laughs> yeah. In yet another fun with horror coincidence, <laughs> I had no idea that the sequel is finally being released, that they finally made it, and it's being released on DVD, Blu-ray, uh, Mar- May 10th. Yeah. In just like a, a week and a half. Yep. It's bonkers. That is so weird how, mu- how often that has happened with us. No, a week from now. Yes, a yeah. A week from today. Yep. A week from this Tuesday. So, Yeah. Not even a week and a half. So that's yeah, that's bonkers. It would have been truly bonkers if I had, if we had picked it the next week. Oh my gosh! And it this episode <laughs> premiered on the day that Dark Knight of the Scarecrow two releases. That would have been That'd amazing. Be crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I I really got nothing more to say. It's not that complicated a movie. It's really not. It's really not. Um, the, yeah. Really, you, you you gave the the big beats. I will say there was one other thing I had to bring up or have to bring up. Please, is we have plenty be- of time. At, yeah, <laughs> at the beginning <laughs> when they blow Bubba away and he's the scarecrow, yeah. and they go and put the pitchfork in his hand. Bubba's arms are strung up, so like if a police officer went there later, they'd be like, "Well, either one, he was tied up and you put this in his hand, or two, he was attacking you and then you put his arm." And hung it up, and it makes no sense. Like I thought about that in the court. Yeah, but that was just me getting frustrated with the legal system again. Gotcha. <laughs> Fair enough. It was yeah, but just little. There's just things like that through the movie that I'm just like, what? Okay. <laughs> I guess I will say that going back to that scene that you're talking about. Uh huh. I did. You know, it was kind of cool. The shot of Bubba's eyes inside the scarecrow mask. Yep, I would agree with that. Let me ask you a question, though. Please. You've seen the poster for this, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. When you saw the poster, did you think that the Scarecrow's like hood had three eye holes? Or is that just me? Uh, I don't know if I really... Oh, no, I thought it was like a mouth and two eyes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the artwork for it right now. Yeah. And I always thought that it had three eye holes. Oh, funny. Which I thought was creepy. And then it only had two in the movie, and I'm like, okay, well, it's still creepy. Oh, it was a good, it was you. a well designed scarecrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll I wish say we'd that much seen too. more of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I feel, and I, I thought that through the whole thing. I was like, after every death, like I get, I get the mystery of it. Is it a scarecrow? Is it someone? I get it. But even if we had not seen who was in the scarecrow, it would have been nice to see the scarecrow lots of times. Yeah. And Lots the, of times. We get it twice. One with Bubba hiding. Well, I mean, a couple little wide shots, but really, and then the end. And it's like, it was a cool design. Show it off. Yeah, man. Show yeah. it off. Show it off. Maybe we'll get it in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Well, I know what you're picking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, okay, let's, let's get to our three questions. We yes. can talk about it more there. Perfect. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. 
So, Scotty, what <laughs> question number one. What was your favorite death slash kill in this movie? Uh, you know, I'm just going to say Otis. Yeah. Because, like you've said a few times, it's the only kill we really saw. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we saw Philby's hand sticking out of the grain. And Mrs. Ritter, I guess. We see oh, her yeah, have a heart yeah attack. we did see her. Mm -hmm. But Otis, he he's the one that most deserved it. Yes. And it was the most satisfying. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, finally. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm going to say Otis. I'm right there with you. Yep. That's Pitchfork in the stomach, Otis. Yep. Oh, boy. Question two. <laughs> was this movie scary? Not in the least. <laughs> but, man, it just, it does. I, Unlike other horror movies mm -hmm. from back then, I can actually see how this would have creeped people out. Agreed. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Back in those days, I can see. Yep. But so. not so much now. No, not 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 me. Not you're right. Yes, not me. I'd be very interested if anybody else is actually creeped out watching this movie these days. True. But. Yeah. Let us know. Yep. Uh and then question 3, did you have fun with Wait, wait. Did oh. you was did, was it scary to you, buddy? Oh no, no. Sorry, I okay. thought I had said it. No, <laughs> yeah, it <you> wasn't. <laughs> no, <laughs> nope. Just want to make sure you get a chance to answer the question. Too. Oh, thanks. No, it was. Oh, you're welcome. Not to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> now question three: Did you have fun with horror? <sighs> not really. Yeah, I'm gonna say not really. I. The movie starts off well, mm -hmm. and I'm I was invested in it. But at a certain point, it just it just becomes a little bit too long. Yeah, it was a one hour story that was told, stretched into two hours, mm -hmm. and or less than two hours without commercials. But you know, I'm just still thinking in TV realm. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's they could have told the story a lot quicker, but they spent a lot of time with things we don't need to see, mm -hmm. and just again the datedness. Of, I didn't want to feel this, but it being a made-for-TV movie, I just, yeah. <laughs> what about you? I didn't. Yeah. Again, this is one I'm I'm not really looking to watch again. Yeah. Really. But at least we kind of a, we agree on this one. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. And you know, I we keep saying it's made for TV. Mm -hmm. One one interesting tidbit is that this was developed as a theatrical release. Oh really? Yeah, it was. This was supposed to be a theatrical release, but it became a made-for-TV movie at some point. Funny. So, huh? And yeah, it didn't do well, but <laughs> it's it's gained this cult following, and I can understand why. Yes. Yep. That's the other thing. I can understand why this movie has a cult following, but I can't sit here and pretend that I really enjoyed it when I didn't. Right. I agree. So, I'm with you 100 percent, man. So that's it. That's Dark Knights of the Scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my good friend Andrew. Yes, good friend Scott. We uh we we tackled the Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Yes. <laughs> um which means that was my pick. Yes. It's time for yours. Okay. So, I'm going to start this out with a story. A story. Yes, Ooh. a story. Uh my wife, Cindy, uh, you know, future mother of my baby, <laughs> she said, because we have Mother's Day coming up, and she said, oh. do you think I could do just the 30 or the three-minute recap? I want to watch the movie with you, and can I come on and do the three-minute recap? I said, that'd be fun. So I'm, I'm assuming uh, this is all right. <laughs> That's fine with me. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> I figured. No, but so we, she was like, we should do like a Mother's Day movie. No, no, not that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, great, there's a movie called Mother's Day, which I, I haven't seen, and I was going to pick it for this just because we wanted to do a Mother's Day movie. But I know there's a couple scenes in it, and I know, I was like, you know, hon, I know there's a few, like, rape scenes in this movie. Eh, you might not want to do the, like, recap on this one. This might not be, like, one... We want to have fun with this. So yeah. um, So I said, let's not do that one. So I went on Google, and I, I looked up, you know, Mother's Day movies. And I found this one. 
I've never heard of this, but it has Uh-oh. it. it no, no, no. It has kind of this little <laughs> cult following. Um, and it, it, I read just a little bit of the synopsis, and I went, okay, that works. Um, it's so it's <laughs> like they said ten movies that would be like Mother's Day movies. There was like you know uh, Rosemary's Baby. I can't do that one. I've seen it. Things like that. But this one was on there as like one of the one of the ones people like. And this is from 2009, okay. and it's a movie called Triangle. Have you heard Triangle. of this? Triangle. No, I'm going to look it up right now, though. All right. Yeah, I've never heard of this. Uh, but I, like I said, I read the synopsis, and I went, oh, that sounds actually like fun. Um, Liam, Hems- Liam Hemsworth is in this movie. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. And what does it have to do with Mother's Day? Uh, it's, it's about a, it's about a mom. <laughs> so that okay. was kind of their reasoning. About I a said, mom. That works. Yeah. Uh, a single mom, I believe. Um, I think. All right. Melissa George is in it. Mm-hmm. Directed by Christopher Smith, who, uh, let's see. He, he, oh, he had, he directed, he did not direct the new, uh, television show called Severance, but oh. he directed a movie called Severance. Ah, okay. A movie called Black Death, a movie called Creep, but not the movie that we did. Ah. <laughs> Interesting. So that's Christopher Smith. Uh, yeah. But yeah. it also, yeah, it stars Melissa George. Yeah. It's got Michael Dorman in it as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's Liam. Liam yep. Hemsworth. Liam, Hem- Liam Hemsworth. Yeah. I d- like <laughs> I said, I don't. <laughs> this, is, this is a movie I just found recently. Uh, what's Yeah. And a- anyone that does want to watch this, it, you can, of course, rent it or buy it. But mm-hmm. if you have <laughs> any of like the free st- you know, streaming services, Tubi, Vudu, Plex, Crackle, Roku, Peacock even. Uh, if you don't mind ads, it's on all of those. So for free, if okay. you don't mind ads. So it's there. <laughs> Triangle. <laughs> Triangle. Again. And this is definitely a horror movie. Yeah, That's what it said. Yeah, horror. Yeah, okay. it, it said it on a few things I looked at. It was a horror movie. So I'm, I'm I have never heard of this it. movie. I haven't either. I think it might be. Uh, don't quote me on this. I I feel like it's maybe Australian or a British movie. I'm not a hundred percent sure though. Okay. Um, I, maybe Australian. Liam Sem- Liam Hemsworth is in it, so maybe. I don't know though. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, she's going to do the three minute recap of Triangle. She is. So oh, boy. that was she wanted it for wanted to do that for Mother's Day. Buddy, I am so glad you didn't pick Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh <laughs> I know. <laughs> I thought that's what you were building up to, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> that was oh, why no. I didn't do it, because I was like, oh, no. Uh, yeah, so oh, <laughs> watch watch this movie have, like, be way worse. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Which yeah, right? Super funny, but. Uh, I don't know. She's pretty bloodied up in the poster, so who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, that's my, my pick, 2009's Triangle. Triangle, as in the Bermuda Triangle? Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Okay. I mean, I was I was thinking a you know, menage a trois, but oh, no. <laughs> it's probably Bermuda Triangle. That would make more <laughs> sense. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So there well, you go. We'll there you go. It. Everybody, watch Triangle, <laughs> and join us next week, <laughs> where for Mother's Day, Cindy. <laughs> Is going to do our three-minute recap. Yes. And then you'll hear what what Andrew and I think or thought of Triangle. Yes. Which neither of us had heard of before before this, before Andrew picked it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, boy. boy. Yeah. (laughs) Jinx. Jinx. Uh, So that's it. That's our episode. Mm -hmm. Um. I just want to, man, I feel bad. I just want to say to anybody out there that is disappointed that we didn't <laughs> care for Dark Knight of the Scarecrow or is like sitting there berating us. Yes. We're sorry. We we just have, we have to be honest. Yep. Yep. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, um, man. So. I'm not going to uh, lie. We, we're honest here. Yeah. We, we like most everything we watch, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Just, yeah. We're, we're batting a thousand right now. Yep. <laughs> so, Aww. triangle. Triangle. <laughs> Next week. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Yes, thank you all so much. We love you. This, is, this has been fun with horror. Uh, if, you're, if you are enjoying the show, please 
go on Apple Podcasts, give us a little review, yeah. write it down. Uh, we'll read you on the air if it's favorable, and uh, <laughs> if it's not favorable, we still want to hear it. But yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Let please. us know what you think. Uh, we love you all. Yes, we love you. We love you. And Andrew, I love you, buddy. I love you, Scotty. And you have a wonderful week. You too. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Sounds talk good. Talk to you next Tuesday. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Talk to you then. When, when we film. <laughs> yes, when we film our, our podcast. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Bye. Bye. Don't worry, Mrs. Bitter. Bud is not gone. He's just been silly. Don't you know what he's doing? He's playing the hiding game. <laughs>